What's up guys, my name is Tony, and today I'm going to give you a quick and painless guide on installing Void Linux. Void Linux is a systemd free Linux distribution that strikes a fine balance of minimalism, bleeding edge, and stability. It is a rolling release distro, but the maintainers focus on testing for build integrity and base functionality, which leads to more stable updates. It uses Runit instead of systemd by default, which is a faster init system than systemd. And if you're a Linux power user, it actually feels better to set up init services using Runit compared to systemctl. At the end of this guide, you will no longer be using systemd, and you'll be ready to install Void Linux on your own hardware. Alright, let's head over to voidlinux.org and click the download button. And we're going to grab this base minimal live image for glibc today. Another good thing about Void Linux is that it gives you the option to use use Musil instead of glibc, but we're going to stick with glibc today. We can cover Musil in a different video. Void Linux has a very detailed installation guide, and there's a tool called Void Installer, which is a TUI installation wizard, but we're going to skip that, and we're just going to go straight into the Truth installation, which is going to be similar to installing Arch Linux or Gentoo or what have you. So we'll head over to the installation guide, and we will click installation via Truth, and we'll be using this as a source of truth here today. And we'll go ahead and start this installation by loading up this grub menu and hitting enter. And to log in here, we'll type root for the login and the password is going to be void Linux. And there we go. We are in our live ISO image. This tutorial is going to be assuming that you have an ethernet connection available, which I do. If you don't have an ethernet connection, I'll drop a link for the IWD or IWCTL tutorial to set up Wi-Fi. And you can either use WPA supplicant or another tool similar to that. But I highly recommend you just use an ethernet cable if you have access to it. And to test that, let's just go ahead and type ping voidlinux.org. And there we go. Looks like it's good to go. We can hit Control C to quit that command and we can clear the terminal. Move on to the next step. So the first thing we need to do is partition our disks. Now, if you follow my channel, you know I'm a big fan of CF disk. So we're going to use that today. Let's type LSBLK to confirm the name of our disk. And there it is. So we'll type CF disk dev SDA. And we are on a UEFI system today, so we're going to be using GPT. So we'll hit enter on this menu to create a boot partition. And that's going to be 1G for a 1 gigabyte boot partition. And we'll hit enter. Then we'll hit down here and hit enter on new to create our swap partition. It's going to be 4G for a 4 gigabyte swap partition. And we'll go down one more time here and just hit enter twice to use the remaining space to create our root partition. And we'll navigate over to right, hit enter, type yes to save and hit enter on quit and clear that. And let's type lsblk to confirm that. And there we go. We see our partitions. Let's move on to make those file systems. As you can see here, it recommends using MKFS just like we do in our Arch and our Gentoo installation. So, so we can somewhat follow these commands right here, but also let's ensure to initialize our swap space. So we'll type mkfs.ext4 dev sda3. And there we go. We have our root file system set up. And for our boot file system, we're going to do mkfs.vat-f32 dev sda3. SDA1. All right. And for our swap, we're going to type MK swap dev SDA2. And there we go. Let's go ahead and mount those drives. And right here in the installation wiki, we do see examples on how to mount the drives accordingly. So let's go ahead and follow these. For our root system, let's do mount slash dev SDA3 slash MNT. All right. And for our boot partition, let's type mount dash dash mkdir. So that makes the directory we're going to mount it to. And we'll type slash dev sda1. We'll mount that to mnt boot slash efi. All right. And for our swap, we'll just type swap on dev sda2. All right. Let's confirm all this with lsblk one more time. And there we go. We've got our root partition, we've got our boot partition, and we've got our swap. So we're ready to install Void Linux. Now the installation wiki recommends to install the base Linux system directly into MNT right after mounting those drives. So we'll go ahead and do that, and then we will generate the FS tab after. So we'll type xbps install sy dash capital R to specify the repo. For the repo, we'll do HTTPS repo default dot void Linux dot org slash current and we'll do dash lowercase r slash mnt base system and we'll hit yes on that and I will see you in a minute all right that is complete so we'll go ahead and clear that 
And now it's time to generate the FS tab here. And instead of gen FS tab, we're just gonna use the X gen FS tab tool, which is exactly the same as using gen FS tab on Arch Linux. So let's type X gen FS tab dash uppercase U for the UUIDs slash MNT. We'll echo that out into slash MNT Etsy FS tab. And we are ready to troot into MNT. So let's get involved. The command for void Linux is gonna be xtroot. So we'll go ahead and use that. We'll type xtroot slash MNT slash bin bash. And there we are, we're in xtroot. XBPS is the Void Linux Package Manager, which we're going to be using a lot today. And the syntax is a little bit different than what you're used to if you're coming over from Arch with Pac-Man or Gen 2 with Emerge. But it has all the tools you need. And as I said at the top of the video, the maintainers do their due diligence on testing all of these packages for their integrity. So the basic commands we're going to be using today mostly are just XBPS install. But I encourage you to take a look at this page in the wiki so you can familiarize yourself with these various commands. All right, let's use XBPS right now to install Vim and Base Devil. We'll type XBPS install Base Devil and Vim. And we're going to need Grub eventually, so we'll type Grub here. And we are on an EFI machine, so we'll do EFI boot MGR. And let's let that rip. Hit yes on that, and I will see you shortly. All right, that was pretty quick, so clear that and move on to the next step. So as we can see here, they recommend to edit the hostname file, and then they want to generate the locales. So same order of operations as if we were running through a quick Arch install. So let's go ahead and get that hostname sorted out. Let's type vim etsy hostname. And I'm going to change this by just typing shift C to enter insert mode in this line. And I'm going to use void btw as my hostname because I'm using void by the way. And we'll hit escape colon wq to write and quit that file. We'll clear that. And for our locales, we're going to need to specify that. So we'll type vim slash etsy default slash libc dash locales. And this file will look familiar to you if you've installed Arch or Gen 2 or what have you. I'm going to search for n us because that's the locale i need i'm going to uncomment this by just using the arrow keys and hitting x on the pound sign because this is my locale but in your case if you're not using the en underscore us locale just search for your locale using the slash key with vim and be sure to uncomment it like so so we can save this file by hitting colon wq again and there we go clear that now instead of locale gen which is what it's available to us on arch linux on here we're going to go ahead and use the xbps reconfigure command so let's build our locales using that so we'll type xbps dash reconfigure dash f glibc dash locales and there we go ready to move on to the next step now they recommend creating a password and then they say you can create other user accounts later, but let's just go ahead and make a password for the root account and let's also make a separate account right now. Let's type password, super secure password, one, two, three. We'll clear that and let's make that user, user add dash M capital G wheel because we're gonna put him in the wheel group, Tony. Create a password for Tony here, password Tony. I'm gonna use one, two, three there because it's so secure and we're ready to give Tony pseudo privileges. So again, we're gonna do editor equals vim vi pseudo. And you can either scroll down with the arrow keys or search for this, but I'm gonna search for wheel. And here it is. So we'll get to the beginning of this line using the arrow keys if you want, or Vim motions, and remove this pound sign and the space after it in order to uncomment the iconic line, wheel all equals all, all, all. Let's go ahead and save and quit that file by typing colon WQ. And now Tony should have pseudo privileges because he is in that wheel group. All right. So we are on an EFI system. So we're going to have to install Grub here, specifically the EFI version. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's type XBPS dash install dash S Grub X86 underscore 64 dash EFI. And there we go. Now we can do Grub install dash dash target equals x86 underscore 64 dash efi dash dash efi dash directory equals boot efi dash dash bootloader id equals void. It's 
pretty verbose, but got to do that here to ensure we have grub installed. And there we go. And let's go ahead and make that config file here by typing grub mkconfig o slash boot slash grub slash grub dot cfg. We can ignore that disable OS prober error because we're not dual booting. So we'll clear that. Before we reboot, let's go ahead and install a couple things here to make our lives a little bit easier in the graphics installation phase. So first things first, let's actually check if Tony has pseudo privileges by typing su Tony. We'll clear that. In order to check that, let's type sudo xbps install dash su. And there we go. So SU is similar to SYU in Arch Linux. It just syncs and updates the repositories. Keep in mind that SYU is not exactly the same flag as SYU on Pac-Man. The Y in this case just tells XBPS to automatically hit yes on any prompt. So it's not the same thing as Pac-Man. All right, let's clear this. And let's make life a little bit easier for us by making a bash alias. So we'll cd into our home directory by typing cd. And now we can type vim.bashrc. Beautiful. Let's move down to this line with the arrow keys or J. We'll hit O to make a new line and enter insert mode. And type alias xi equals quote sudo xbps install quote. And let's escape colon wq there. Let's clear that. And let's source that file by typing source.bashrc. And now we can test that with xi-su. There we go, the alias works. Now, a couple of programs we want for the graphics part of this installation. And that's gonna be xorg, xinit, so we're gonna have an x server, and we're gonna have an x init so we can use start x. So let's go ahead and take a look at the void documentation to see what they recommend. So void Linux's xbps package has just an xorg package, which covers pretty much most cases, and that includes free video drivers, fonts, etc. And we're gonna be using that today. Alternatively, you could use the xorg-minimal package, but we're actually just gonna go with the xorg package today so we can get a catch-all for all the fonts and what have you. So let's go ahead and type xi, because that's our alias. We'll do xorg and x in it. And we'll hit yes. As we can see, we're going to be downloading quite a bit here. And I will see you in a minute. All right, we got those 152 packages. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step here. For today's installation, we're going to be using i3wm, which is a very minimal window manager. And that's just in theme today with Void Linux. Void Linux is a very minimal distribution, but you can really use any window manager you want or even any desktop environment you want. You can install KDE or GNOME or DWM or whatever your preference is. And I encourage you to go to the wiki. And for example, if you want to install KDE, you can use this KDE Plasma package, which covers everything you need for KDE. And there you go. But for me, for my situation, I'm going to stick with i3 especially for this tutorial just to show you guys how to set up a minimal system all right let's get that going here let's install i3 i3 status and we're gonna need a terminal so let's do alacrity and we're gonna need a web browser so let's do firefox for that and we're gonna need to end the video eventually so let's get neofetch and let's let that rip and that looks like 382 megabytes so i will see you in a minute all right got those packages so we're ready to move on to the next step we are almost ready to reboot here, but we want to make sure that our internet works on reboot. So let's go ahead and install DHCPCD and set that up as a service for run it. So DHCPCD is a minimal solution for network management, especially if you are using an ethernet connection. So that's what we'll be using today. So let's go ahead and get out of Tony by typing exit. So now we're back in Trout and let's make sure DHCPCD is installed. I think it already is, but let's type it anyway. XBPS dash install DHCPCD. Yep, already exists. So all we need to do is set that up as a service for run it. So if you're used to using system D, you know that setting up a service, you type something like system CTL enable service name. Um, and that's all right. I mean, that's not terribly verbose. And for run it, instead of having some alias command that creates a symlink for you, we just make the symlink ourselves and really has better readability for someone who knows what's going on already. So let's go ahead and set up DHCPCD with run it as an example here. So we're going to type ln s slash etsy sv dhcpcd and we're going to symlink that into etsy run it run sv dir default dhcpcd so now we can do lsla etsy run it run sv dir default and we see we've got our tty's and we've got there it is dhcpcd is symlinked right there and it's really easy to set up services in my opinion using run it you just symlink the file yourself and 
this is actually going to create better habits going forward for you because you're now going to understand what's actually going on under the hood instead of relying on the system ctl aliases all right let's clear that and i think we're almost ready for a reboot let's move on to the final step we need to ensure that all installed packages are configured properly and this includes init ram fs and draycut and what have you so Let's go ahead and run this reconfigure dash fa command. It's going to be xbps dash reconfigure dash fa. And there we go. We're finally ready to reboot. So let's go ahead and exit out of the truth. And let's do a umount dash r slash mnt. And there we go. We've got everything unmounted. So we're ready to shut down. Let's do a shutdown dash r now. And, and we are prompted with this void Linux grub menu. Perfect. And beautiful. We have that login screen. We see the host name void, by the way. And let's go ahead and log into our account here. Tony123. And there we go. We're logged into Tony on our void Linux setup. Perfect. All right. We're ready to jump into our X session here. So what we're going to do is we're going to type echo quote exec i3. And we're going to output that into dot X in it RC. And we're ready to jump into void Linux. So let's go ahead and type start x and there we go. Now, when you start this i3 without a config file, it prompts you to generate one. And we are going to generate one today, guys. So just hit enter. And this one is asking you if you want to use Windows key or Alt key as your modifier. So for me, I like using the Windows key, super key. I'm gonna hit enter on that. There we go. The config is written. All right, we see this beautiful i3 status bar here, which tells us, of course, we don't have a battery because we're on a desktop here. And we've got the date, beautiful format. We've got information about the ethernet. We've got an uh, IPv6 IP address, it looks like. A lot of information here, guys, and this is customizable. This is just the i3 status bar, and yeah, maybe one day I'll make an i3 video and we'll go into how to customize that. But for now, I'm um, just gonna focus on Void Linux here. So for now, we're going to need to install an application launcher, and we're gonna go with the D menu today, since that's what's used by default on i3. So to install that, let's go ahead and hit Super Enter to open a terminal, and let's type XI, because that's that alias we made for XBPS install, and we'll type D menu. And hit yes on that. And yeah, very, very quick to install that. Clear that now. And for D menu, it should already be binded here. So let's test that out. Let's open up a new workspace by hitting super two. And let's try super D. There it is. There's D menu. So we can open up Firefox here. And there we go. Beautiful corporate art on launch, exactly like what we're used to seeing when we download and install Firefox for the first time. So great, the bloat continues. Let's go back to our other workspace by hitting Super 1. And yeah, I'm going to briefly show you what the config file for i3 looks like since we're in void Linux here, guys. It's going to be vim.config-i3-config. And so you've got a config file here, and it's going to look a lot similar to the Qtile config if you watch the NixOS tutorial I made. Basically, this file allows you to rebind certain things for your window management. And the beautiful thing about i3 is that you can reload it without restarting your X session. So for example, if we wanted to make a custom bind here to open Firefox, we would just go down here to the section of the file where we're binding programs here. We just go down here and hit O to enter a new line in insert mode and just type the same here, bind sim mod plus B for browser exec firefox and just save that and, and again one of the benefits of using i3 is we could just hot reload this file without restarting our x session by hitting super shift r and now that bind should work so let's go ahead and test that new key bind we made here by navigating to the second workspace here with super 2 and then closing this firefox here with super shift q now we should be able to open firefox again with super b and there we go. i3 works and is reloadable when you add key buttons to it. And that's going to be a quick jump into i3 for those of you who want to get started customizing this. All right. Thanks so much for checking out the video. If you want to see any other operating systems or Linux related tools in general, just drop it in the comments and I'll check it out. But for now, I'm going to end the video here by running an obligatory NeoFetch.